Today is the day, October 1st, where a strike takes place with all the dock workers. Now, by the time you're watching this, it could have gotten worse or it could have got worser. Is that, is that a word? I don't know. The point is this. No matter if the strike keeps on going or the fact of the strike that gets settled and they negotiate a contract, both actually suck for you as the consumer. Now, what am I talking about and why is it a big deal? We're going to discuss that today. We're also going to discuss our fearless president, our fearless leader, and what he's doing for North Carolina, which is nothing. But we're going to talk about who's doing something. Let's dive into these two stories today because this is happening this week. And if you're not ready for it and you're not prepared for it, you're the one that's out there in a boat that's trying to go upstream without a paddle. Let's dive in today. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. That's okay, but let us know what you think about the content of today. Today is your last day to get into September's drawing. I always give it to the first, if you remember, and I will be drawing this drawing this evening around midnight, so that way you can get into the drawing. So please make sure you are subscribed, commenting, thumbs up. That's all it takes to get in the drawing. We're going to be giving away a, a modern needs survival, uh, kind of a solar charger, a vanish holster, and also some goodies from us, some soap, a shirt from us that we personally make from you, and a letter saying thank you so very much for allowing us to be part of your lives each and every day. Now, let's talk about the stories of the day because that's what matters. If these things keep happening and we keep having issues like this, what we're going to see is you better either be prepared or you're going to be left out there with no help. Now let's, let's dive in. First, let's talk about this October 1st. Now I'm filming this but while the strike's going on. So if they negotiate before then, uh, this, this story could change a little bit. The reason I wanna bring that up is because either way it actually is ter terrible for you. Now let's talk about why. Now we had uh, the negotiator, the one that's actually for the LA and the one that's actually negotiating for the dock workers, stating that he can cripple uh, really this whole USA, not on purpose and he's, I'm not, dogging him out. I'm just saying that he's saying that's how important dot workers are. Now, they're wanting around a 20 to 30 percent increase basically um, from where they were. They talked about working through the pandemic and working through all the things they went through. Well, guess what? A lot of other people did too and we didn't get a 20 or 30 percent increase, but I digress. The point is they are important. I'm not saying that they're not. Sadly, we live in a global economy that depends on stuff coming in on, sh on ships. Think about it. What about cars? What about automobiles? What about parts? What about the things that you need that you order from Amazon or eBay? All that comes from overseas. Walmart, how you keep the prices so low is because it comes from overseas. These things are how most people make it. It's because, for instance, they can't afford sometimes American goods. Now, I believe we should change that. I believe that we should char charge more tariffs so that way it costs more to send crap over here that's no good and we start buying American again. But again, I digress. That's not the point of today's video. But here is the point. Either way, if they get their raise that they're wanting, which is 20, 30, 40%, whatever it may be, you're gonna feel that because the goods that's coming in on those docks, the owners and the big companies are not gonna be the one to take the loss. They're just gonna pass that on. It's called a pass-through, and I call it a stupid tax because what it ultimately will do is the union will take care of their people, or so, so they say, and then, of course, the big business owner is going to keep on making the money that they had because they're not going to cut in their pocket. So therefore, guess who's going to fill it? You when you buy the automobile. You when you buy the goods. You when you buy the Amazon or Walmart package. You when you thought you were getting a better deal and you actually see that it cost you 20 or 30% more. So even if they come to an agreement, it's going to cost you more. Now say they don't come to agreement. Well, you've got a strike going on. And to be honest with you, it will keep on going and probably uh, get worse for it gets better. Well, guess what they said? They said by week one, you'll see automobiles not being sent here. By week two, you'll see malls struggling to be able to have clothes other than what they had on the shelves. By week three, you see doors closing to certain areas because they don't have the goods to keep open. What does that mean? That means the supply demand is getting crazy. The, su the supply chain is at a crisis level. Therefore, the goods cost 30, 40, 50% more is usurious. It depends on what they have and how much they have and how, much, how bad you want it. So the price will go up for sure on speculation saying that, well, we only have a certain amount of goods, so therefore, uh, I guess you gotta pay this for it. You don't believe that's gonna happen. 
one way or the other, you're going to be paying more at the grocery store. You're going to be paying more at the supermarket. You're going to be paying more at the malls. You're going to be paying more at whatever you're trying to buy because it is a supply and demand issue or it is a cost-effective issue. They're going to pass that cost down to you either way, either way. So really, the consumers, the U.S. Americans are the ones held out to dry. Now, let's pass this right into the next story with North Carolina. What did people need the most when this storm came through? They needed cash. They needed food put up. They needed storage. They needed water. They needed gas to get out. They needed ways to protect their home. Chainsaws. What about wood so they could heat their homes? Gas, petroleum, propane, things that they needed. You know what they didn't need? They didn't need digitized currency. They didn't need bank checks or a way that they could have money in the bank because the bank was closed and they couldn't get their money. They didn't need certain things like uh, solar generators, even though I believe in solar generators with the power being out as long as it was and the fact that there's no sun because it's been raining and flooding was the solar generator the most important thing. No. I mean, don't get me wrong, it'd be great to have, but that was something that was not as important this week as what a gas generator was. You know, this came out this week that Biden said, he said in an interview twice yesterday that that's all the help that they can give. They can't give any more resources to North Carolina, Georgia area. That, that is what he said. Now, he's trying to backtrack on that now because of the blowback he took. But I want to read the numbers of just this week, the money we sent out of the United States just this week. At the same time, he's saying there's not enough money to help the people in America. He says, uh, Biden says there's, there, there's just no additional resources to help these people in the area of North Carolina. I mean, they're doing all they can. I mean, we can't help them anymore. Why don't you listen to this? Biden-Harris administration approves this week 567 million, million military packages to Taiwan. In the past seven days, Ukraine, 8 billion, Israel, 8.7 billion, and Taiwan's 560-some-odd million, like I said. Totaling over $17 billion we sent out to help other people across the globe, but we don't have enough money and enough assets and enough resources to go help the people who are Americans struggling in one of the states here in the Union. Actually, two or three of the states here in the Union. Do you not see the fact that our leadership absolutely sucks? And I say that to the congressmen, the governors, all of them. They all suck because they're not doing anything for its people. They'll grandstand and talk about it, but they're still passing billions of dollars over the seas because they get kickbacks. You know what? If they give that money to North Carolina, they're not going to get any kickbacks. They're not going to get any kickbacks from Georgia, from Tennessee. You know why? Because the military contractors and the defense contractors and the lobbyists still want the money sent across the seas, so then therefore they're paid back. They're giving money back to them. Money's a-flowing but not if they try to help somebody and actually do the right thing. But guess who is doing the right thing? Trump. Trump is in Georgia right now. He's raised a million dollars. One million dollars. Now, you don't think that's a lot of money. It may not be when it comes to disaster relief, but that's way more than the Biden administration has even tried. Do you remember back in Katrina days? And I remember this because I lived through Katrina. I was in the areas that were devastated. 05, Bush, three days later, flies over, and all the media did was destroy Bush for being uh, above or not helping Katrina victims and for flying over, okay? Now, let's talk about what the media has done for Kamala and Biden. Biden literally is on vacation. He was literally on the beach when this took place. Kamala was in California saying that she was grateful to be back with her people, doing her things and sitting at a dinner that was a very expensive for all the elite. Then they show her a clip worried about the people in devastation's way in North Carolina. Well, guess what she was doing? She was flying. She wasn't looking out of the window. She was on this fake, she had fake white paper that she was writing on it, and there's no writing on it. She has headphones in that's not hooked to her phone, but she's taking a photo op that the, mili that, that, that the media is saying, oh, she cares for the people. All the while, the only one that's actually down there doing something that's not making money off the people, Donald Trump. You know what else he did? Reached out to Elon Musk. Elon Musk said he is doing Starlink sets to where he's sending out to make sure that they can get internet up, phones up, to help the people in that area to communicate. Now, Elon Musk and Trump didn't make any money off that. They're doing it because they're leaders. That's what leaders do. 
DeSantis, another one. Strong conservative, and I know him and Trump don't get along on everything, but you know what he did? He sent his own National Guard, his state troops, to help with North Carolina. You know what else? He demanded that the Washington, D.C. cesspool and, and swamp up there actually start sending some resources to help them. And he was going to do all he can to get that done. That's what a proven leader is. You know, he got his power on quick in, in Florida. You know what's so funny? We were in Florida when it happened. And not one time did we lose power. And the people that lost power, there was people cutting trees up. I mean, there was crews everywhere. Now, I'm, I'm being honest. We went through Tallahassee, Tampa Bay, all those places just yesterday, two or three days after the storm. Now, there's debris everywhere. But you know what? The roads were clear. Communication was going. No problems with anything because they had people out there working. That's what leadership looked like. What Trump, DeSantis, and Musk are doing, that's what proven leadership looks like. Just like this, this situation with, with the, the, the strike. You, you know what was said yesterday? Biden's getting off his plane from being on the beach and, and saying he's not going to help out North Carolina and Georgia. This is what he said. They said, what do you think about the Yemeni strikes and the strikes in Lebanon, the strikes? They kept saying strikes, and they're talking about Israel striking, and they're talking about the Middle East having turmoil. He comes out and says he's talked to both sides and they're going to work it out. He's talked to both sides on collective bargaining. He's going to work it out. He's so lost and he's so much of a of, of a, a dementia ridden patient patient that he literally thought they were talking about the, the the dock strikes while they were talking about the Middle East strikes, the bombings. He's inept. And his second in command, she's flying and making money everywhere and trying to be the princess of the kingdom here. All the while, she's doing nothing. Did you see the interview she did with the two basketball players yesterday? Absolutely horrendous how this lady has any clout with the Democratic Party. The only people supporting her has got to be people that's, that's got monster stuff on them. <laughs> the government has got to have, has to have secrets on them or something. Because there's no way you can support this lady and support her policies because she flip-flops more than anything. Now, we have a VP debate tonight. Walsh, it came out yesterday that it was released to the CIA and released to the FBI and released to the government that he has intertwined ties to the CCP. Go back and look how many times he's flown to China. I've made, I made mention of this right when he became VP. This man is encapsulated with the CCP. There's documentation. Go back and look at it. Research it. He got sent to Jim Jordan, got sent to CIA, got sent to FBI, and guess what? Nobody's done one thing about it. One thing about it. And all the while, he is going to be the VP candidate for Kamala, who never got a, even a, one vote in a primary. What are we doing? So this is the things that happened in this week. Let's go back and recap, because this is the stuff you need. We have a hurricane that destroyed a mountainous region. A mountainous region. Those people didn't need anything but cash, food, water, gas. They need chainsaws. They needed tools. They needed help from their community. That's what prepping is. That's what it means to take care of your friends and family in your local communities and doing the things that you need and people coming to your rescue and helping. They didn't need all the stuff that the government's telling you need. They didn't need any kind of, DG, they didn't need digitized currency. And those electric cars and all that, uh, they're burning up right now because they got flooded. So they can't, all that stuff was worthless. The stuff they needed was the stuff that we always talk about. And then all of a sudden we see the fact that they're not getting help. So therefore, it always comes back to you making sure that you are being the help that you can be. That you are taking care of yourself. I've told you time and time again. No one cares for you like you care for you. No one cares for your spouse or your children like you care for your spouse and children. That's why we homeschool. That's why we live sustainable. That's why we raise our own food. That's why we prep, because I know that I'm going to take care of my six kids and my wife better than anyone else. Because the government just backed out and said they're not helping North Carolina and Georgia. I mean, it's great that Trump and Elon Musk are coming alongside, and I, com I commend them. But sadly, it should be our government. This is where government should help. But instead, they're worried about still funding wars that we shouldn't even be in. And of course, the dock strike. And then, of course, the drug strike. I've told you for the last, I've, I've done three videos on the dock strike about getting prepared. Now it's here. Either way, if they negotiate or they don't, it's going to cost you more. Remember, right now, go stock up and get what you need because these things will be gone for long. 
you need to make sure you have food, you have water, you have gas, you have propane. You also have the things that you need for your vehicle. Say you needed something fixed. Say you needed the simplest of things done. You better do it now because it's going to be harder to get some of those things. And if they do get them, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg, maybe a few fingers and toes. Don't be, don't be the proverbial head in the sand, the ostrich head in the sand. You better start waking up because if all these things start transpiring, along with the fact that Israel and Lebanon situation that's going on, this world has got some black swans that could easily happen at any point in time. Are we actually ready for any of this? These things are happening this week, and you better be prepared for it. My goal, put my cash up. Stop how food, water. I have extra propane. I want to make sure you do too. I do have a solar generator. There's nothing wrong with that, but I also have a gas and propane generator. I want to make sure that I'm doing all I can growing food. I want to make sure I can do all I can by being smart, by keeping my vehicles full of gas, by keeping stuff loaded and ready to go and go bags. I want to make sure that I don't keep all my money on the phone. I want to make sure I don't keep all my money in the bank. Why? Because of the scenarios that just took place this week should tell you we're living in crazy times. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this. Again, none of this stuff is meant to scare you. It's meant to say it's time to prepare and be smart on the things that you need. Go to the grocery today. Buy the things you need because either way, negotiation or not, it will cost you more. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, remember to subscribe. This is your last day to get into the drawing. We will be doing that drawing tomorrow. It will do the drawing tonight. We'll release the, uh, the, we'll release the winners tomorrow. Thank you for watching. God bless. Be free.